deserves the freedom to craft the life she wants and the guts to go after it. We will share stories, facts, and opinions on various aspects of life to give you that kick in the ass to light you up and spread killer vibes every day, 24-7. Today, we're talking about work-life expectations between millennial women and Gen X women. Obviously, you all know me, I'm a Gen Xer, but today I have a really special guest and she's a beautiful, beautiful woman, a millennial, and her name is Daisy Ayala, and she has her own podcast, by the way, and her podcast is Life is Full of Daisy's Podcast, so please go over there and follow her and subscribe to her. How are you today, Daisy? I'm well, how are you? I'm great. I'm so grateful to have you here today because... You know, our conversation about millennials and Gen Xers has been going back and forth. You know, my producer Arlo and I have been talking about Mm -hmm. this conversation for a while Um, and just differences between the women. uh, Even though there's just maybe a few years in the gap, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of, um, I guess, intrinsic um, motivations that are different between millennials and Gen Xers. So... Your podcast is called Life is Full of Daisies. Uh It's a place for modern millennials to encourage and inspire one another where you talk about all things life and how to be the best version of ourselves. Yes. I love that. I love, love, love that. But today we're going to be talking a little bit about Gen X and millennial women and how our work-life expectations are different. Mm -hmm. I think we've been having a little bit of a podcast, a little bit about how we see things different. Maybe we have expectations that are a little bit different, but also there's a lot of commonalities. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I love, love, love that we can be free and open about it. Gen X, in case my listeners don't know and they're wondering, I don't know if I'm a Gen Xer. So Gen X is someone that's born between 1961 and 1980. They're roughly 59 to 40 years old. They're they're called America's middle child. So if we know anything about middle children, they're ignored all the time. (laughs) Y'all are asking for attention. Yes. (laughs) I have my brothers and my sisters who are middle kids and they're always like the middle kid for sure. Because you're born between two big generations, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the boomers and the millennials, Mm -hmm. which are huge. We tend to be politically moderate, but personally independent. I myself was born in 1975, so I kind of hold the ideals of the Gen Xer because I'm very much about um, work before life. Um, but that was me maybe, I guess, 20 years ago, and that's how I live my life. Like, work was everything to me. The older I get, Daisy, mm-hmm. the more I become less about work and more about life. You're becoming a millennial. I think so. <laughs> I'm getting infected by the millennial bug. Whoever hey, that's it's infecting me, it's contagious, and I'm feeling it, and I'm getting it. But I do feel that way, but that's how I was brought up, you know? College for me was a continuum. You graduate from high school, you go to mm-hmm. college, there's no breaks in between, you go all full. So it's a continuum, there's no breaks. Um, and for our motto, I think my motto was you work, 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 safe, safe, safe. Work, 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 safe, safe, safe. You don't live life until you finally feel like you've saved enough money uh-huh. and then you go on and live life. You know, Gen Xers have Madonna. Well, yeah. yeah. I love Madonna too. <laughs> Madonna. She was our girl, 1980s, Nirvana. I was brought up with Dr. Dre, Tupac, oh, Biggie, yeah. you know, all of those things. Now, let's talk a little bit about millennials. And okay. I want you to pay attention to this because I want you to tell okay. me if this fits the paradigm of a millennial. Okay. So, they're born between 1981 and 2000. Mm-hmm. They're roughly between 39, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. They're the most educated of the last generations, uh, but they don't earn as much money as their predecessors. I would I would agree with that. Yeah. They lean uh, left politically and they're more tech savvy. Yes, for sure. For sure. 
hello to my beautiful millennial uh, producer. <laughs> she's kind of at the she's, cusp. She's a baby. She's the, a cusp. But thank goodness for her because I am not tech savvy. Even she probably knows more than I do. Oh, oh. She can can I, teach me a few things. Can I just say my kids are the ones that fix my computer for me? They're the ones that get my computer done for me, my apps. Everything that has to be tech, my kids do it for me. And my kids are considered linkers. Linkers. Yeah. That's what their their their, their demographic is, is linkers. So my my oldest is a 2003 and he's considered a linker. Yeah. That's what they're called. They're linkers because they were born linked to the mm-hmm. internet. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's yeah, going to yeah. be interesting to watch them grow up and see how they are. So... It's interesting raising them. I uh, well with the as, social yeah yeah as a Gen Xer, raising kids that are linkers and so heavy on the Instagram, mm-hmm. the Snapchat, mm-hmm. and now the TikTok. My husband calls it the crack talk because it's like a crack for them, and they are on it all day, every day. <laughs> I mean, when you we're all about convenience, yes. and when you have things that are you know sixty second yeah. long or video delay, no, you want it now. Yeah, we, yeah. We don't like the delayed uh, gratification anymore. It's, no, which makes me worried because it's like we don't know how to be patient. Yeah. I know that's another thing that millennials or a stigma that we have is that we're not patient and this and that. And, we don't know what that is. We want things now, or we want things. We want those promotions now. Yeah. So, do you see some of those? I guess some of those things um, ring true for you in terms of how these facts play out. I would say yes, more so. But I also have a different upbringing than what most would probably mm-hmm. have. Mm-hmm. Growing up in a small town on a cattle ranch is, is definitely going to bring you up with a different mindset. But I would generally yeah. say that I, I... One thing for millennials is that we have really high expectations of everything, even our, our careers and whatnot. Uh, we tend to be not as patient and waiting for, the, like, working really hard and knowing that in a few years, five, six years, yeah. that you can get there. We yeah. want it in a year. Yeah. And it's like you have to understand that you have to be patient to get there. Like you're the like Gen X or yeah. y'all. I think know that's that. the difference. And I think one thing that we knew as we were growing up, my husband and I are both Gen Xers. We had that mentality that you work, work, work for years. Years. Like we went and um I think we were married pretty young. We were 25 and 23. But we we were at that point where we knew as Gen Xers we were going to work, work, work. We used to put 60, 70 hours a week where we didn't have time. Like I would see him literally. He would come home at 6 or 7 o'clock at night and it was dinner. Mm-hmm. And it was bedtime because we just did not have time for each other. It was just consumed by work. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a Gen Xer mentality, but I know that we were brought up to, to think that you work, you work, you save your money, you save your money, save your money. And then in the future, maybe 20 years down the line, mm-hmm. you enjoy it. My employees, as I was a boss and they were millennials or Gen Zers, mm-hmm. they didn't see things that way. Yeah. For them, when they came in and negotiated with me and they said, yeah, I want to work with you, but I need to have a life. Uh, we are definitely about <laughs> a work-life balance, but yeah. I think it depends on what age you're, what age of the millennial you're talking to. Because I know when I was younger and a lot of my friends that are in their mid-30s now, we focused a lot on our career and we did you know go for it but again we also came out you know graduating in 2008 yeah and there was a recession going on mm-hmm. you know we went through 9-11 all these things happened that we weren't necessarily making as much as like gen xers probably made coming out of college and so we had to catch up and then we also had for some reason i read this somewhere that we have more <clears throat> student debt than the previous generation. Yeah, yeah, Inflation, yeah. maybe. I read that as well, yeah. I think that's part of the research, yeah. And so I think that we were hindered in that aspect, but at the same time, 
you know, we had all these things that were against us and now we've had to catch up. So I personally, for a lot of my friends, like I said, we focused on our career and getting established in a sense. And then getting into our thirties, we also had to have that balance. We we're traveling, going out with friends. That was our way to relieve ourselves from working. Yeah, you know, we yeah. didn't work, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever The worked. nine to five mentality yeah and and i think for your generation some of the boomer mentality was also yeah. installed because it you was were raised by boomers yeah we were raised by boomers so that was definitely not only that but we were raised by immigrant boomers which is a whole their ball game which my parents are immigrant boomers <laughs> by the way y'all. They're so they raised us to be super careful with money like you pay mm-hmm. cash like my parents said credit cards were the devil. Mm-hmm. Um, you have cash, you pay for it cash. You put as much money as you can in the bank account. Um, if you buy a house, you stay in that house 20, 30 years. You don't move. You just stay there. If you buy a car, you better pay for it cash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there's so many different mentalities of how boomers can be influences on any of us. Not just Gen Xers, but millennials. Oh, yeah. Right? No, my dad had the same mentality. He's like, you have to yeah. save, save, save. And da, da, da. But yeah. for some reason, I think the millennial, like, because going to college exposes you to other mentalities and thoughts that I saw, oh, well, you can travel and you can do all these things. So I'm like, well, I want to travel. And I, I have to find that balance of what I prioritized getting my career going, making the money that I wanted to make. And then traveling. That, so, that was my priority. As a millennial, what made you start thinking about things in terms of more balance? Because our topic today is like the work-life balance. How do we balance both work and life? And I think Gen Xers tend to prioritize works, work over life. But millennials, from what I see, an anecdotal information and some research they balance more life as opposed to work tell me about that um so going back like i said to just my core group of friends and they're all millennials pretty much all of them somehow they manage to still work really hard just like gen xers but then they realized at that point that I want to still enjoy my life because I saw my dad and how hard he worked. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want, like, I want to be able to enjoy the money because what if I, d-? you know, I guess because we went through 9-11 and you don't know how short life could be, mm-hmm. that could have been the pivotal shift for us where it's like, you don't know what will happen. So you need to try to balance where, yes, you're working hard to achieve a certain, you know, income or or whatever in your job Mm -hmm, career. mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you need to enjoy some of that life because what if you worked all your life and then you die at 30? Mm -hmm. You didn't get to live out your life. So I don't know if maybe because we did go through some of those bigger, like like I said, 9-11, and then we came out in a recession, that those things kind of put things in perspective for us. It's like, well, at any given time, you could not have any more or you know you could lose your job because with the recession a lot of Mm -hmm. oil and gas Mm -hmm. and all of that dropped Mm -hmm. so for me it was finding I didn't want to be extreme like my dad because I felt like that was it's like what are you working for like I get it but that was his dream and that fulfilled him so I always knew that he always had this goal and he wanted to fulfill that so I wanted to be like well what's my what fulfills me And then I sat down and realized, well, traveling and having good friendships and all that, that's what fulfilled me. I wasn't focused on getting married and I wasn't focused on, you know, all these other things like Mm -hmm. having kids at that time. I was Mm -hmm. focused on, yes, I wanted to make more money because I wanted to be independent on my own and financially stable on my own because that's what my dad taught me. Mm -hmm. But like I said, because of those things, it just shifted where I wanted to have that balance. And I think a lot of us millennials do want some balance in our lives Mm -hmm. because of how extreme maybe our parents were. Yeah, and I think you see the older generation or maybe, I don't know, you know some Gen X bosses or somebody that lives that life and they live to work pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I think that just stems from kind of like the boomers because we still take, as millennials, Mm -hmm. we do watch Gen X or Yes, mm-hmm. do we work as yeah, hard? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a byproduct of a boomer. Mm-hmm. So, But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, what is your perception of 
how what what you want to achieve in life like just because you work you know 60 70 hour weeks does that mean that we didn't work 60 a lot of times people are doing work from home working weekends right like, so i think that's the next question that i wanted to ask you is is it that important to feel a balance between what you work and how you live uh yes And no, I think in the beginning, like in your right out of college years, you just want to, if you're career oriented, you want to excel and you want to get to the highest point quicker, Mm -hmm. faster. Because like Mm -hmm. I said, we're not very Mm -hmm. patient. So we want to work hard and get there. But when you are in your later, in your late twenties, early thirties, you start to either get married, settle down. You have more of a mentality where I have to figure out how to balance these things so I can be the best at work but I also can give the best at home and then also social media comes into play Mm. with social media you Mm -hmm. see all these things and you're exposed to so much information Mm -hmm. and a certain lifestyle that Mm -hmm. you're just like well I want to live that lifestyle so then you want to start living you know traveling and doing what other people are doing right 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 which gen xers don't didn't have that exposure no we didn't we didn't even see that until recently honestly so so i think that that pressure wasn't there for us at all and right now there's this pressure of uh, being like the perfect wife or the perfect mom and it's like it's so hard to find that balance but I think in the end of the day, when it comes to finding balance, it's it's what you perceive as your balance. Like, yeah, if work is important to you, okay, then that is what you're gonna do. I mean, I have a friend who is an attorney, and she works, she works from home. She works really long hours. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. for her, her what drives her and motivates mm-hmm. her is the money. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. she's gonna do work those long yeah. hours. But for like me and my other friends what drives us and motivates us is being able to have that balance between our careers and yet also be able to is the attorney friend a millennial or is she a gen she's a millennial she is okay so she's living a little bit different that sounds more like an older generation because those people will always take work over life like that's not even a question for them but i think even with just i guess because millennials were were just the way I really want to say that social media definitely was what projected us to think differently. Why? Because you're trying to keep up with the next social media influencer. That, or you're, you know, you're exposed to what a what a in parentheses perfect life is, mm-hmm. and so you're like, oh, well, I need to work, but I also need mm-hmm. to travel, and I also got to do this, and I got to look this way, and I have to maintain myself. And, and can I say that is a really toxic place to go? Yep. Because I do get the DMs, I do get the conversations where like, oh my gosh, you go all over the world. But we've, my husband and I have been at it for 20 years. See, not everybody knows the behind so, the I know. So I want to say like that lifestyle that I, that you see now me living now at this point in life, it's 20 years of grind and hustle from both of us. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think a lot of people see it as like, it's aspirational. It's aspirational. They want it. I get DMs from women and like, what do I need to do to have your life? And what do I need to do to have your husband? Oh, yeah. Really? Is, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 And it happens in my DMs and it happens all the time. And I show them to him and he laughs about it because this lifestyle didn't happen but 20 years along the way there was so much that happened between 1999 and 2019 Mm -hmm. that progressed for us to be able to get to this point but i think what's happening is a lot of them are starting to see like i want what she has I want what yes. she's got. I want that husband. I want that lifestyle. And a lot of times they don't want the man. They don't even like think about the man. They're like, I want to live her fucking life. That's the life I want. What do I need to do to, do, to have that? Um, yes. So social media can definitely be very toxic in that sense. But also I think as social media influencers, you know, whether you're on a small platform or a large platform, 
it is also our job to show people like I didn't get here just by winning the lottery. I got here through hard work and perseverance and I worked really long hours. That's why I love anybody or an influencer that like shows you the behind the scenes. They'll show you, you know, especially like the influencers that are new mommies, they will show you the mess around oh, the, the house, mess. the yeah. new moms. Like you know how the struggle with a, a newborn is. That That's, a, I give y'all praise because I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it. Hopefully I can, but it, the fact that people are being more raw and showing what it takes to get there is mm-hmm. giving us an example. Like you, you have to actually work for it. You can't expect someone to just give this to you. Sometimes I do feel like it, with millennials, that work ethic yeah. can be lost. Mm-hmm. And like I said, for me, it's very different because my father installed a very good work ethic yes. in me as far as an employee yes. and integrity and all of that mm-hmm. because he made us learn the value of a dollar. Gotcha. He would make us go build fences or go do certain things on his ranch. So if we wanted to buy these nice new shoes for school, he's like, okay, well, how much you are they? Them. You have to earn mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And I feel mm-hmm. like it also mm-hmm. may be because of how you were raised. Maybe Gen Xers have been better off. So then their kids may be a little more spoiled than say what they were yeah which yeah, isn't yeah, necessarily yeah. their fault but i think right we need to recognize that as millennials and know hey i actually have to put in the work and yeah. effort look at what your parents actually have a conversation with your parents yeah and see their struggles because then you start to respect them and they become your friends when you actually realize the struggles that they, they went had. through yeah and yeah. i think that's something that i definitely talked about in my book in my book, I really say that parents need to tell their kids the struggle they went through because the kids need to know how they achieved where they are now mm-hmm. and what they went through to get to that point, basically. But I think one of the things that we we don't consider as as generations, and we're both both women, and I'm you know ten years older than you. And the outlook that I have in life, mm-hmm. what are your, what is your generation, what are millennials working for ultimately? What do you feel is the ultimate outcome? When it comes to when you go to work, you do your thing, what is it that you really want at the end? I think a lot of a core belief for millennials is you want to feel like you're making a purpose. You want to feel like you're making a difference in what you're doing yes you have to work hard Mm -hmm. yes you want to make money and all of us do don't get me wrong I'm the same way like I want to financially be stable on my own but I think the biggest thing that drives us to either leave a company or stay at a company is that we have to one feel appreciated Mm -hmm. and two we have to find a purpose within what we're doing yeah if there's no purpose then why are you even there you become an employee that does the bare minimum yeah you're not very motivated which goes back into Millennials are seen as unmotivated uh, employees. Would the right boss Ex- give yeah. you that? I yeah. think, the, and that's another thing is Gen Xers have to understand, which it seems like you have a very good understanding on that, is as a Gen Xer boss and even yeah. boomer bosses, you have to learn how to speak to millennials. You have to learn how to motivate them because they're not going to be motivated like your Gen Xer. You know, they're just not. We have to find purpose. And if you look at all these, like, Google, uh, uh, the mm-hmm. reward, what is it, style, uh, like to know it, the reward mm-hmm. style, the, mm-hmm. they started their company in Dallas. If you look at their work culture, mm-hmm. it was started by millennials, so they obviously understand how to motivate the, mm-hmm. their employees. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Gen X or bosses sometimes don't get that. And so mm-hmm. then they lose out on really having great employees because if you can motivate them you get the best work out of them yeah of they course. feel like they're doing something for you and helping your business grow i think a part of it's just as a gen x boss understanding your millennial worker yeah and understanding where they're coming from and not getting so pissed at the idea they're not gonna work the way you want them to work but they're gonna work differently yes and that's not to say they're not going to have productivity. That's not to say that they're not going to do their best work ever. But I think one thing that we forget as we're older, not just Xers, boomers, we forget that that community and that group of, of, of kids have so much to offer, but we just don't know how to harness 
that effort. Mm -hmm. And if we learn to harness that effort, because that's one thing that I always talk to, to my husband about. It's like, these kids come in with like the most amazing background. Mm -hmm. They're freaking knowledgeable about everything that's going on in their world. Mm -hmm. Tech savvy. They can't figure things out. Like I could go on a website. I'm like, I don't know how to upload something. (laughs) Um, And then I'll send it to my producer and she's like, oh, it's uploaded. It's done. It's posted. I'm like, oh my God. I think a part of it is just having an understanding Mm -hmm. that um, they work in a different paradigm than we are used to. We're used to very structured ways of doing things Mm -hmm. we were raised by boomer parents as well so our parents were like you gotta do this at this time and you gotta have this and like even today my husband could be super successful and he's never gonna have any praise he's never gonna have any kudos from his parents ever just because they never feel like he's ever good enough for anything Mm -hmm. but that's just a boomer mentality I don't know if it's boomer. I don't know if it's cultural, but there's just never going to be. Um, it could be a little of both. A celebratory comment at all. I think, and even then, I, I always go back to how. So my dad, he the way he looks says, "Oh, you've worked really hard," and he's proud of all three of his girls. Don't get me wrong, but for him working really hard he's got calloused hands i mean he's got mm-hmm. hands that work out mm-hmm. mine are mm-hmm. like soft i put lotion on mm-hmm. whatever so when you when he looks at my hands sometimes he's like oh he's like my hands are the man the hands of a working man i said just because you work that way doesn't mean that i didn't work hard mm-hmm. either mm-hmm. i just did it a different way a different we're very way. Yeah. progressive and we like to be innovative mm-hmm. and we can have a same old problem in a corporate company, but you have to learn to value that millennials and even your Gen Zers, because they're also coming into the workforce, they look at, these are different eyes looking at from a different perspective. Yes. And we have to learn yes. how to, one, respect each other yeah. and know this person can teach me a lot because they, they're they seasoned, they're tenured. They've been there. Whereas, Gen Xers need to understand, wow, this kid, you know, they're progressive. They might look at something different, but just because mm-hmm. we're not doing it the way you're doing mm-hmm. or the way you mm-hmm. work doesn't mean mm-hmm. we're not working and we're not getting yeah. We find ways to make it easier or make, you know, yeah. finish a project faster and more efficient. That's just how we work. Yeah, and I think that's where the Gen X woman, the Gen X boss comes in and says, you know what? I like the way she's fulfilling her her thing and looking at productivity in a different way not looking at it from a nine to five type of job and saying oh you know what she was productive from like nine to twelve and she freaking pulled it out there's there's two things that my husband always talks about and we talk about this all the time we talk about how we see uh sweat equity Oh. And your father saw it as like, oh, he saw that and he had calluses in his hand. But one thing we always say, the mental stress is always heavier than the physical, physical. stress. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that we always teach our parents or tell our parents because my parents will say, I but you know, you didn't go this, you didn't do that. You didn't go like, you know, 10, 15, 12 hours. But the mental stress that we have as a boss, as guiding employees, giving employees directions, um, dealing with employees, you know, problems Mm -hmm. and clients, there's so much of a difference. And that's something that we have to kind of talk to our boomers about and be like, okay, listen, maybe we're not putting in labor, but the mental stress that we're heading in and we're going through, it is freaking harder. And sometimes we're like, you know what? I think I would rather be physically stressed and deal with it than have the mental stress in my head and be dealing with employees every single day. Yep. Boomers don't understand that though, because for them it just becomes like, oh, you didn't work hard enough, long enough during the day. Honestly, we did, but it was mental. Yeah. Well, (laughs) and to me, it's like, okay, if you let's say you have you have to finish this project, and if you give it to boomers, Gen Xers, and millennials, who will probably finish it faster? A millennial, because they're more savvy to where they're like, oh, let me figure out, I'm going to make this more efficient. And they make things more efficient. But yeah. they, and all three projects are turned in and they're mm-hmm. all done correctly mm-hmm. and well. Mm-hmm. 
but a millennial finished it faster. We, like I said, we are just more innovative work because we want that balance. Yeah. We are going to work hard. We're going to give you that, you know, yeah. like five hours yeah. of work. And yeah. then we want to enjoy life and not have to, like, stress ourselves mentally with all these other right. things. Right. And they want to be off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, having a good time, having That's a blast. <laughs> and honestly, to me, now looking back as that person, I always say, you know, if I would have been able to be that girl that... Um, um, worked maybe from 8 to 12 and be super productive I would have done anything from 8 to 12 that I could have done from 8 to 5 it made no difference I would have not taken a break I would have not taken a lunch I would have just had it done 8 to 12 boom I'm going home I'm dealing with it that's it it's over and we we love our flexibility mm-hmm. because we're not just focused on our job we want our yeah. we want to focus on our passions on you know like me I'm doing this I work as a dental hygienist four days a week and then I have my Fridays off in the weekend to work on this project or to work on other things that I really want to fulfill. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like we have a better understanding of fulfilling ourselves as a whole mm-hmm. versus just work, work, work. Because it's like, what's that going to accomplish? You worked hard. Although it's like if you <laughs> yeah. work really hard for yeah. 20 years, then you can retire early yeah. and start fulfilling. We're just doing it in a different time. Yeah. And as your boss, I would say I would look at your schedule and I would say, well, what did you do from my Monday through Friday and you'll say well I did 8 to 12 I did this 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 and this and this and it all got done ask your boss I would say wow that was very efficient I didn't need to have you here from 8 to 5 to do like stupid breaks or lunches and you're like no I did my job and I came and I did it and boom I was out the door and that's why yeah. I think, you know, with the whole pandemic, but like some of my patients, they, their companies are now offering to, they've been offering work from home for before the pandemic yeah. hit because they noticed that their employees are more productive doing things from home. Like they still get their job done, but the employees are liking it because mm-hmm. when they come in mm-hmm. and, you know, they're talking to me, they're like, oh, I love the flexibility. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that's, that's it. It's like. As an employer, you have to understand that that w- that's what drives your employees. You're still going to get a great product. They're still going to do the job. You just don't need to expect them to be sitting on a computer from 8 to 5. Yeah. They'll do it in four hours, mm-hmm. and then they have a flexibility to go take care of errands or go to the doctor's visits yeah. or whatever. Which honestly leads to a healthier lifestyle, by the way. That balance that we it's love. It's a balance. It's healthy. But also, It's healthier. It is true, and also the health aspect mm-hmm. because y'all because Gen Xers and Boomers work so long, y'all were you're stressed out. No, and all you're thinking is work exactly. All day. Yeah. Whereas we don't. I would say that I mean because I think uh, the one the person one of the per- girls that I interviewed we were talking about like life insurance, and back then you didn't need a lot of retirement mm-hmm. because you didn't live as long. Whereas mm-hmm. now we're living longer, and I don't know if that's just because we're finding a balance, and mm-hmm. it's not all about mm-hmm. just work, work, work. Mm-hmm. And then maybe have fun if you still have the energy for mm-hmm. it, or if you're not sick or enabled, that sort of thing. So that's a really good realization. I think a lot of, of us Gen Xers are realizing that we may not be around to enjoy the money that we've been working for for so many years. Mm-hmm. The hours that we put in to save, save, save. The, the things that we give up so that we can have that savings account so that we can in the future, you know, or, you know, use it for travel or whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, we've discovered it along the way, and my husband will tell you we knew customers who their whole life work, 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 and one of them got sick and they never enjoyed their life. And so their money went to their kids. They never enjoyed one trip because they work so much. So that's a realization that I think we develop as we get older. But do you think, let me ask you this question mm-hmm. because I think this is something that is just. Um, I don't know if it's affecting millennial Latinas um, in the cultural aspect, but do you think that we will put up with more bullshit because we won't say anything at the workplace? Um, Let's just say, for example, Mm -hmm. you have a boss who's just making you work overtime and not paying you overtime. Mm -hmm. Let's just say there's a colleague in your office and it's and he's making innuendo and he's, um, you know, sexual talk. Maybe there's a little bit of talk. Do we put up with it a little bit more because we don't want to rock the boat or do millennials really go to their boss and say, hey, this guy is 
acting cray cray right now. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't with him right now. He's an <laughs> asshole. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. We're barely hitting. We're millennials. We're kind of rocking the boat. Mm-hmm. We are speaking speaking more of these social issues than the corporate issues. For sure. But I do, like, for me, if I am not comfortable in a place, I will be the very first one to speak up, you know, in a professional yeah. manner where it's like, hey, this has been, I'm bringing this to your attention, X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. you know, how can we figure out a way to work together? But as Latinas, do we put up with more? I want to say we do because we are afraid, you know, because we've strived, our parents wanted us to succeed, and now we're here and we are doing better than our parents And you're kind of taught to, like, suck it up and shut up. I would say majority are. I cannot speak for myself because my dad always taught me not to. He Mm -hmm, he taught mm -hmm. me to speak up and be independent. No, my dad the same. He would say, you better go say something. Yeah. And I'm very vocal as a person Mm -hmm, in general mm -hmm, mm because I don't tolerate, you know. But as a community, as a culture. As a culture, yes. We definitely do put up with a little bit more than what we should. But I think that's changing. I think because we're creating platforms where Latinas can have a Mm -hmm, a voice, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. can speak up and say, this is not, this is injustice. Is like we deserve the same rights that anybody else in this company deserves. Just because we are beautiful and whatnot does not mean you can come and hit on us and we won't say anything. I think that movement think is starting to point. shift. Mm-hmm. But yes, I think I Romania, think there's a shift, and I think that women, younger women, realize that there's older women out there that are going to have their back. That's and true. be there. Um, I know if I was growing up and I was young and I was being abused at the at work, I would think, well, who do I go to? Do I go to a lawyer? Do I go to my supervisor? Do I go to a friend who knows more? I think nowadays girls can see, hey, I know her and I think she could be a good backup for me. I think we have that um, network out there, that system where we can go to each other and say, you know what, Alicia? I'm being like accosted by this guy in my office. Yeah. What should I do? And I'm gonna be the one that says, "You better go after him. You better say something about it." And that, that like, that goes back to just like we're creating platforms and communities mm-hmm. where we can mm-hmm. come to one another. I think mm-hmm. we have to keep these, even with, you know, as a millennial, we can learn so much from Gen Xers, and like I said. They have, they're the ones that are going to have our back because usually y'all are more tenured. You have more mm-hmm, investment mm-hmm. in a company. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very important, especially in a work environment, for the Gen Xers to open those doors because sometimes there can be this divide. Exactly. And that's something that I think we need to really convey to the younger generation is that like, hey, if you're being accosted, if you're being, you know, um, subjugated by your superiors, then come to one of us. If we have the connections, we have the lawyers, we have the money to sort of pursue whatever that comes whatever that comes to. But yeah. also in corporate America, like these bigger companies, a lot of times you you know you don't have that much diversity because mm-hmm. um, I have one friend that works that has that is in a corporate office and she actually ended up leaving that office because it became like there's a lot of things going mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. and she was the one that people started coming to because mm-hmm. she opened that door mm-hmm. for them to confide in her okay and when she finally was one of the whistleblower and finally said something mm-hmm. then they were coming after her position so it We don't have a lot of the Latinas in the workforce, and we need to, and it's changing. It's a progressive thing, but we have to learn, like I said, to just build that community. And I think that there is a community. I think there's a community out there of women that are willing to back you up. Oh, yeah. No, now there's, you know, there's movements. There's Mm -hmm. there's all kinds of Instagram pages to help. And even within, like, each city, Mm -hmm. there are actual people that, you know, once the pandemic is over, Mm -hmm. I think people will have more networking events to help Mm -hmm. build Mm -hmm. those relationships so that you do feel like I do, there is a voice and I have a voice. You have a safety blanket in in other terms, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I think that's super important, especially if you work for huge corporate companies yeah because i think corporate tends to do things with impunity they tend to say oh she's just a young girl she's just you know here Um, for the job and i can do whatever i want with her i can tell her whatever the hell i want i can send her suggestive messages she's not going to do anything about it because who does she go to 
and creating that sort of security blanket saying, no, you don't have to put up with that. Well, even with the whole like Harvey Weinstein, Mm -hmm. whenever that came out, Mm -hmm. I think that that showed women that you don't have to put up with that. Like just because you, yeah, you want to advance in your career, you want to, you know, get ahead. Yeah. You don't have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. You do not have to take that kind of abuse from someone Mm -hmm. so that you can get ahead in your career. And that's with all women, not just one culture. It's all women across the board. And that's opened up that door to where we all have a voice in it and we all are building, like I said, that community. That community. Where we're helping each other out. It's like a safety, I think to me, it just seems like a safety blanket that if you fall, we're going to catch you. Yeah. That if you need that person to just be there and just catch you when you are going through the worst fucking scenario, then we're going to be there and be like, Girl, we got you. And no, we got you. And there's girls all over the place, Gen Xers, and I can say that just from experience. And we were going to be there. And we're going to be there to lift you up and be like, "What do you need? Do you need a lawyer? We got a lawyer. Yeah. Do you need um, representation? We've got representation. Yeah. Do you need a community backup? We have community backup. I think that's where we're heading in terms of millennial and Gen Xers connecting and commonalities and saying, yeah. "Babe." Go out there, rule the world. If you come to a to to some roadblock in 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 the road, we're here to help you because we've been there, we've done that, and now we have the resources, which is different. Younger women don't have the resources; they're kind of living up to that point where they yeah. can become more resourceful and be sort of the mentor to the younger generation. But us, those of us that are in in the Gen Xer community, we have the resources now. We've been through those things you've done it yeah yeah we have the people in our background we're like hey what do you need you need a lawyer we've got a lawyer for you if you need money let's put some money in there for you so we can defend you because i think nowadays i think a lot of women don't realize that they have a network of girls and women that are having their back i don't think they know they have we have their back and i think yes that's true but also with social media now people have a platform where they can voice Mm -hmm. what's going on and then they can find a group to help them advocate for whatever they're whatever is happening to them personally so you know like i said yet we as millennials need to learn to lean on our gen xers because they do have a lot of knowledge resources and they can help you get through those things i love that so we just we can't be selfish either and think that it's just about us because I love that we can be selfish and it's all about our world. Yeah, but yeah. In the end, we're all women trying to set a future for yeah, the future but, generation. But Daisy, in this day and age, the f- situation that's going on in this country, we mm-hmm. have to become united and we have to become a force. Mm-hmm. And we have to start looking at, you know, Gen Xers, Zers, Linkers and saying who has the the foot in the door that we can talk to and ask them for help. And honestly, there's a lot of us that are out there and have our foot in the door and we're like, what do you need? What do you need? Yeah. Do you need me to come in and, 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 and be there for you as a stand-in for your mom? Because a lot of times we don't have our family support. Mm-hmm. We're going to be there and we're going to be the stand-ins. One thing that I want you to just clarify for all of our listeners. One thing that you I want you to get rid of. You say, stop saying that about millennials. I hate that. What is it? That perception that we have. We think of millennials like lazy. They don't want to come into work. They don't want to, you know, think too much. They're unmotivated. What do you Um, want to say? Stop it. I would... Two things, actually. Okay. First one is that we're lazy. We're not lazy. We're just innovative. And like I said, we like our balance. We just know how to get our job done or job done at a shorter amount of More time. efficient way. Yeah, we do. We, we're not going to sit there gotcha. and twiddle our thumbs and, you know, waste time when it's like, if I can get this done in three hours, I'm going to dunk it out in three hours. That's just the way we think. Yes. Also, thinking that we're unmotivated. It's not that we're not motivated. You as a you know, Gen Xer and boomers need mm-hmm. to realize mm-hmm. that what, motiva- what motivates you is very different than what, what motivates us. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand what those things are yeah. to bridge that gap gap so that you can still fulfill and motivate that employee gotcha. and get the best work out yeah. of them and like i said we're not 
I hate that we have that misconception about us. We are motivated. We're actually making a lot of change as millennials. And like I said, we're fulfilling way. We're trying to fulfill all these other aspects of our life, not just a job. A job is just, it helps us pay the bills and it helps us get to another point in our life. Which, by the way, for younger generations, your job was your life. And for millennials, job is just a job. A jo- I mean, to, to me, I I can honestly say being a dental hygienist, that was one of my passions. But I have other passions. Yeah. And I have other dreams and aspirations. We didn't have other passions. Our job was our job, and that's the only thing we focused on. And it, well, and that, like I said, that goes back to kind of how you were raised, but then how you were, yeah. like, how that generation, the mentality. Yeah, the mentality. Whereas we are more free thinking. We are all about living your dreams, fulfilling those dreams. So we have a, a bigger space to be able to do that and yeah. we're comfortable. Yeah. And then, like I said, we also have parents that are somewhat supportive on that. Like, yes, they push you to have a college degree. Yeah. But. Yeah. You know, hey, once you get your degree, you make a, you have a yeah. job that pays well. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. So you're faced with a Gen X boss. What do you want her to know about you? Gen X boss. What do you mean? What do you... So you're getting a new job. Okay. You're promoted. You're the director of all the ladies at the oral hygienist mm-hmm. department. She's a Gen Xer. What do you want her to know about you? Uh, that I'm going to look at things you know from my perspective and then make sure that there is the balance where we are our employees are happy but yet they are striving to also produce and do well in their respective career what position they're in but I'm not going to be very strict in in the way that they were taught to do things I'm just for me I like to have like said that balance Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. the employee plus the managerial side of it so that so back off but let us be don't micromanage me like tell me what you want oh that's another thing is as employers like i said we have high as millennials we have high expectations of a lot of things and that's a problem because we need to also realize and take responsibility as a millennial we need to lower those Mm -hmm. expectations but Mm -hmm. raise Mm -hmm. your standards Mm -hmm. And the only reason I say this is because expectations are the belief systems that you yeah. believe are going to come or yeah. or not be. Whereas standards are based on facts. Like, this is what I'm willing to take as my norm. So you need to raise that. And yeah. you're not going to have those standards met 100% yeah. of the time. And that's okay. Yes. But know what you're willing to say. Okay, you know, I'm going to lay off on this but I'm not going to lay off on the amount of money that I know I deserve as an employee or you know the benefits that I deserve as an employee that goes back to entitlement yeah. but but it goes back to just your boss knowing that you will work efficiently mm-hmm. you will ultimately produce the results I'm still going to get there. You're still going to do your goals. You're still going to reach your goals. You're just not going to reach your goals the way she wants them to yeah. be reached. So just having that discussion yeah. of like, what are you expecting? What do you mm-hmm. want out of me? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, well, this is what I expect out of you. And I'm going to do it a little different, but you have to let me have that leverage yeah. where I can do it the way I feel yeah. like I can get it done. Yeah. So, yeah. And honestly, bridging the gap means understanding each other. Mm-hmm. Understanding where you're coming from and you understanding where I'm coming from as your as your boss, as the older woman, as the one that was raised to see things in in a different perspective. But really bridging and coming together as finding commonalities. We both want the same result. Mm-hmm. We both want to be successful. Yes. We both want to make money. How we get there needs to be a uh, a puzzle of both of us, a little piece of you, a piece of me, and then we're going to get there. I think that's something that I've discovered as I've become a boss in, in a few years is like, you know, she's smart. She's got it together. She's pulled it together. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, I need this done. She's got it done. Whether or not she does it on my timeline, because I have graphic designers, I have photographers, and they yeah. turn in stuff. Two weeks later, I'm like, hey, I need it by Wednesday. And they turn it in Wednesday, two weeks later. I understand that. I'm like, okay, Wednesday for you meant two weeks after. I need to be more clear 
in what I need and what I expect. And I'm like, hey, I need your photos to be here by Friday. And that means this Friday, not two Fridays. Set a date and time. Yeah, and you're going to get paid. Honestly, you're going to get paid the minute those photos come in. But I think it's just a matter of just being really clear about our expectations and how I work and how I see things the way that I want things to be done. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give up on, you know, encouraging you to push, push, push. Mm -hmm. Because I think one thing as a mentor, as an older boss, is like I need to mentor you to be the best person you can be and if I'm going to push you to that person and be that best worker that you can be for anybody because you may not work for me your whole life you're going to work for somebody else you're going to have those skill sets and you're going to say hey I work with a boss that was intense she wanted things done timely she wanted things done right and you know on point period yes she's going to be ready for that person Yes, and that goes back to communication on both ends. Like Absolutely. I think that sometimes millennials are also afraid to ask or even be like, oh. Okay, you know what? what? I haven't found that. Really? <laughs> they're Some very good about telling me how they want to. Some people that, people want that I've encountered, they don't, they're kind of afraid to ask for certain things. And I'm like, no, oh, why? Really? I was like, okay. you have to clarify to know where your goal is going to yeah, be so yeah. that both of you are on the same page and you can learn from that. It's always a learning experience and you always have to look back at what am I learning from this to make you a better employee and also you one day will also be an employer. So, yeah. And we'll have to deal with the lingers. I know. I know. <laughs> or this is such a good conversation. I appreciate you, Daisy, coming in and just talking to no, me thank about you for this. Having me. Um, I love just reaching out to to women who are out there and doing it, not thinking about it. That's true. Doing it. Because thinking about it, you can think about it for years, but execution is freaking hard. It is. It took me two (laughs) years to start my podcast, so there you go. No, yeah, yeah. For me, you know what? I no, I only think things through because I want to think to be perfect. And I've started to let go of things because perfection doesn't exist. Progress, progress, progress. Perfection doesn't exist. I tell myself this every single time. I want everything to be perfect. I want my my social media to be perfect. I want everything to be curated. I want my life to be perfect. It's not. Mm-mm. I'm Let learning. Let go of it. No, I doing the whole, myself doing the podcast and I do everything myself. Yeah. My from my very first episode to my current ones, yeah. all my friends have said they're like you keep getting better and improving, and I was like, because yeah. I always told them, I was like it's not gonna be perfect. I'm an amateur, but you know what? I don't care. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna learn along the way, and it's all about just literally pushing yourself out of those yeah. comfort zones and knowing that you're gonna mess up, but yeah, ma- you know, laughing about it because mm-hmm. even people will tell you me have I said to. something. Yeah, you have to laugh about it. Well, I had someone. That, someone told me that like, oh, you pronounce this wrong and you kept saying it and I was like I was like I'm not from this is English isn't my first language okay and guess what amazing that you're willing to have the courage to do something in your second language I, I mean how freaking amazing is that like Arlette is the best writer my my producer is the best writer I know in the world and English is her second language her writing is not as good as mine and I grew up with English but her writing is fantastic and I said I've never known somebody to write as good as this girl and English is your second language by the way anyways I'm so grateful to have you you have been nothing but amazing and phenomenal and wonderful and I've gotten to know you I'm grateful for Vanessa that connected yes. us because she knew she knew you guys needed to get together <laughs> Here. You guys are a match. Match. Next like, yeah. thing I want to do with you yes. is something that I told her I wanted to do is I wanted to do a makeover. Oh. Because I'm looking for single girls that oh. want to do a makeover Whoa. for their dates. Oh, okay. Because I know what you need to be wearing and dressing when you go on a date with a guy. Oh, okay. Then let's... Are you what, there? I'm there. I'm committed to it. Uh, we got to just find a guy to go on a date with. No, no, no. We'll find a guy. We'll find a guy. <laughs> but I need to dress you for that date. Okay. I'll let you dress Because I have a date. way of, 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 of packaging it where the guy just swoons and just cannot get enough of you. Oh, well, hey, I'm game for that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> That would be, I uh, hate, we all need help. Obviously, I'm still single, so obviously I need some help. No, 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 no. Not that you need help. You just need to be enhanced a little bit. 
Yeah, that's right. Just a, a little, a little enhancement. A little. We're not going to be so conservative anymore. We're going to oh. let a little bit out. What do you use? Like, <laughs> do you use like the clo- your clothes or my? Yeah, my clothes. Or, yeah, or, or your, your clothes. clothes or your clothes or my clothes. It's all the same. Okay. It's about the. It's about the personality. Mm, okay. And like, I, I have all kinds. Yeah. I wear. I'm all over the place. With, I know, but, but if you're looking for a certain type of man, this is just my my thinking. If you're looking for a certain type of guy, you have to dress a certain type of way. Because they're all they're all about looks. Women are about what they hear. Yes, yes, but that's not to say they're not all about the head. No, they are. But, but they're initial. very visual. The yeah, visual, very the, visual. It's yeah. like what <laughs> intrigues them in the initial. State. Yeah. If you looked at my Instagram account, you'll mm-hmm. see that I'm very sensitive sensual very sexy but i'm never showing any part of my body yeah no i'm open to it okay let's do it yes that's the next one (laughs) thank you so much i appreciate you daisy thank you for having me i loved loved this conversation it was great i loved it bye guys y'all have an amazing week thanks thank you so much everybody i appreciate you guys come back tell us what you think subscribe give us your feedback i really want to know what you're thinking See you next time.